Once again, we welcome you to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And I thank you so much for choosing to spend this time viewing our Sunday morning worship. I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your journey. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you for leading us beside the still waters and removing the fear as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We praise you for the wonderful work that you're doing, even those that we don't understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in Luke chapter 1, verse 5 through 19. I'll be reading the English Standard Version. It concerns the birth of John the Baptist, uh, how it was foretold. Uh, our subject here will be, you're not too old. No matter what you're thinking, you're not too old. And might as well just throw in, you're never too young either for the Lord to use you in some special way. So here we go on the verses. Uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 5 uh, reads, In the days of Herod, king of Judah, uh, Judea, rather, there was a priest named Zechariah, one of the divisions of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he, uh, Zechariah, was serving as priest before God when his division was on duty, according to the customs of the priesthood, he was chosen by lots to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense, and there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angels uh, said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine nor strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel uh, to the Lord their God, and he will go before him uh, in the spirit and power of Elijah uh, to turn the hearts and, of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom and of the just and to make, make, make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I'm Gabriel. Uh, I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news, good news from heaven that you're not too old. Uh, you're not too old for God to birth something impossible to you and great into your life. God can use you no matter what your age might be, especially even if you're getting on up in age. God is able to birth something uh, great into your life, to bring something through you that the world needs. Now, the Gospel of Luke was written for a man named Theopolis. That Theopolis means lover of God. He was probably a Roman official who had trusted Christ and now needed to be established or taught in the faith. It's also possible that Theopolis was a seeker after truth, like uh, Nicodemus was, who was being taught the Christian way because uh, the word translated instructed in Luke 1 and 4 gives us our English word for 
Katak human, uh, Katach human, someone who is being taught the basics of Christianity. And, and, and one of the dangers is you can be in the crowd for years and, and have never received the basics and, and, and life won't make sense to you. Christianity won't make sense to you. So the basics that uh, Luke sought to pass on to Theopolis was important. Now, this story focuses on Ze Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. God had allowed John to reap, uh, 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 Zechariah, well, rather, to re reach a ripe old age, and his wife Elizabeth was barren, and she was old also. To make it to their age meant that they had passed the window of opportunity for some things that normally take place at a younger age. There's always things that we look back and declare, I should have, I would have, or I could have, if. But it's never too late for God. Now, hopefully, uh, we're not doing things or acting in ways in our uh, age uh, that should indicate that we have matured uh, and stopped doing long ago but that we are uh, heeding uh, the admonition of Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and verse 8. He says, when I was a child, uh, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And there comes a time when, when we should gladly put away childish things, childish actions. The, the, too often grown-ups act like children. They were not unequally yoked, thank the Lord, and, and, and being equally yoked is a very important in relationships. Verse 6 tells us that they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. We are called to learn uh, uh, from them, and this is a good lesson, uh, they live to please God rather than man. We do well if we learn and work to please God rather than man. Verse 7 says, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the customs of the priesthood, he was chosen to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Now, with these credentials, you would think that they were perfect. But like all of us, they had their shortcomings or problems in their lives. How many of us live productive lives? We're faithful uh, in church and, and we're dependable on our jobs and, and, and good neighbors to our neighbors. But when God decides to birth something great through us, we show a weak faith. It was indeed a dark day for the nation of Israel. The people had heard no prophetic a uh, word from God for 400 years, not since Malachi had promised the coming of Elijah in Malachi chapter four, verse five and six. The spiritual leaders were shackled by traditions and some instances they uh, allowed corruption to invade their lifestyles and the, the government of that time much like it is in this day and time. And their King Herod the Great was a tyrant. He had nine and some say 10 wives, one of whom had uh, executed, uh, he had executed for no apparent reason. But no matter how dark the day, God always has his devoted and obedient people. Now let's look at three things and then I'll leave you alone. Three things about Zechariah. 
and hopefully we can learn something uh, in our relationship with God. The first thing is he was a faithful priest. He was a faithful priest. Zechariah means Je Jehovah has remembered. And his wife Elijah means God is my oath. Now we're uh, these were godly couples uh, who both belong to the priestly line from the Old Testament. The priests were divided into 24 courses in 1 Chronicle chapter 24. And each priest served in the temple two weeks out of the year. In spite of the godliness around them, Zechariah and Elizabeth was faithful to obey the word of God and lived blamelessly. And, and, and we got to learn that there's a great difference between how we see each other and how God sees each of us. He, God saw, saw Job totally different from even how his friends saw him. And, 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 and so we should spend some time asking God to show me me so that I can see me the way you see me and the things that are wrong in me, I can uh, uh, submit to you that you may straighten me out. There's only sorrow, their, their only sorrow was that they made uh, uh, all of the right choices in life, but they had no family. And they made this a matter of constant prayer. Little did they know that God would answer their prayers and give them not a priest, but a prophet, something, someone great. And no ordinary prophet either, for their son would be the herald of the coming king. Have you ever prayed for something and after a long period of time you hadn't received it from God and you just figured God wouldn't answer it? Now, now, now so they were, uh, Zechariah was a faithful priest. His family was just like him, though it wasn't very big. It included uh, Elizabeth, but they feared God and they sought to please God. Now, the second thing is, Zechariah was a fearful priest, a fearful priest. The priest on duty drew lots to see which ministry they would perform, and Zechariah was chosen to offer incense in the holy place. And this was a high honor that was permitted to a priest but once in his lifetime. So this is Zachariah's one and only opportunity to burn incense in the temple. The incense was offered daily before the morning sacrifice and after the evening sacrifice about three o'clock in the afternoon. Now it was probably the evening offering that was assigned to Zacharias. You have probably notice that God often speaks to his people and calls them while they are busy doing their daily task. Both Moses and David were caring for sheep and Gideon was threshing the wheat. Peter and his partners were mending nets when Jesus called them. It is difficult to steer a car when the engine is not running. In other words, God will not choose a person that's lazy and doing nothing to do something uh, for him. When we get busy, God starts to direct us and to order our steps in his word. When we get busy studying and meditating on his word, then God will start using us. Luke mentions angels 23 times in his gospel. Uh, there are unnumberable or innumerable angels according to Revelation 5 and 11 and only two of which are actually named in the scripture. That's Ma Michael, 
He was uh, mentioned in uh, the book of David, uh, or Daniel rather, and Jude uh, chapter, I mean, verse 9, Revelation verse 12. And then there's Gabriel mentioned also in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 8, verse 16, and chapter 9, verse 20, and Luke in our text, verse 19 and 26. When Gabriel appeared by the altar, Zechariah was frightened, for the angel's appearance could have meant a divine judgment on him. And the people outside knew they were aware of the danger of the task that uh, Zechariah had been uh, assigned. Now, the angel Gabriel says to Zechariah, fear not. Now, this word appears uh, repeatedly in the statements in the gospel. Imagine how excited Zechariah uh, must have been when he heard that he and Elizabeth were going to have a son, even in, at their age. They must have felt like uh, Sarah did when she was listening at the door of the tent and she laughed within herself. So that's, that's funny. Sometimes you have to admit that God has a sense of humor. And some of the things that he does that's so surprising and amazing to us causes us to laugh. Now rejoicing is another key theme in the book of Luke mentioned at least 19 times. God, uh, God gives us good news and it brings us joy. Gabriel instructed Zechariah to name this son John. That means Jehovah is gracious. And to dedicate the boy to God to be uh, a, a Nazareth all of his life. He would be filled with the spirit before birth and would be God's prophet to present his son to the people of Israel. God would use John's ministry to turn many people back to the Lord. Just as Isaiah had promised in Isaiah chapter 40, verse one through five. So he was a faithful priest. He was a fearful priest. And now He's a faithless priest, a faithless priest. You would think that the presence of an angel and the announcement of God's word would encourage Zechariah's faith, but they did not. Instead of looking to God by faith, the priest looked at himself uh, and his wife and decided that the birth of a son was impossible. He wanted some assurance beyond the plain word of Gabriel, God's messenger. He, maybe he wanted a sign from God, much like us. Instead of believing the word of God, we need something more. Now, this, of course, was a sign of Zechariah's unbelief. And unbelief is something that God does not accept nor does he have to accept. Zechariah was really questioning God's ability to fulfill his own word. I need to say that again. Our doubtfulness in God to fulfill his word is like Zechariah who was really questioning God's ability to do what he said he would do. Had he forgotten what God did for Abraham and Sarah in, in uh, Genesis chapter 18, verse 9 through 15? Did he think that this physical limitation that he had would hinder the almighty God, the omnipotent God? Remember, you're not too old for God to, to burst something great into your life. But before we criticize Zechariah too much, we should examine ourselves and see how strong our own faith is. Faith is blessed, but unbelief is judged. And Zechariah was judged for his unbelief. He was struck down. And, and, and until 
He was done that he could not talk until the word that God sent to him by Gabriel was fulfilled. I believe and therefore I have spoken, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Zechariah did not believe and therefore he could not speak. When he left the holy place, he was unable to give the priestly benediction to the people as was customary in uh, all the way from Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 through 27. He was, he, he, or he couldn't even tell them what he had seen. He couldn't mention anything about Gabriel and, and the great news that he had received while serving. Now, indeed, God had given him a very personal sign that he would have to live with for the next nine months and not be able to tell anybody. Each of us have human limitations, and they are just that, human limitations or drawbacks or inabilities. God is all-powerful, which means that he has no limitations. He can do what no other power can do. And Jesus died on an old rugged cross one Friday on a hill called Calvary. They buried him in a borrowed tomb, and after being in the tomb for three days, he fulfilled God's word that he would rise, rise after three days. He rose from the dead. There's power in God's word, power to lift up bowed down heads, and power to humble us when we live in doubt. Jesus rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. There's a song that, that I'm thinking about right now that goes like this. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and he rides up on the storm. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds ye fear and much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. And his purpose will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. And the buds may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. But God is his own interpreter and he will make it plain. You're never too old for God to birth something great. It might be an idea that you will pass on to the next generation, but you're never too old for God to birth something great through you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for teaching us that age is not a limitation to you. It might be one for us, but not for you. Because you can use the young and the aged in great ways, simply because you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In closing, I want to say, by way of a reminder, please wear a mask when you're away from home. Even if you're going to go down to your neighbor and, and just uh, say a few words or ask how they're doing, you need to protect your neighbor and yourself. Wear a mask whenever you're away from home. And uh, practice social distancing. It's easy to forget. 
But keep the Holy Spirit, I believe, if we allow him, will remind us when we're in a situation where we need to practice social or physical distancing, however you want to put it. And then wash your hands often. And remember that the Lord has brought us this far from the middle of March to now. And he's well able to take us through all of this pandemic uh, called uh, COVID-19. It's bad. And the scientists and doctors are saying it's going to get worse. So let's get better at doing what we need to do. And with that, so long. May God bless you real good.